Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I want to uh, begin my time here to, with a thank you. And I hope the members across the aisle don't get too excited, because uh, it's not for them, okay? It's for my constituents. Uh, for, for voting me in 14 months ago and uh, sending me here to be a voice for them and to work on their concerns and on their behalf. And who could have predicted uh, that we would have been in the situation that we're currently in? We'll say that my office has been open the entire time uh, during this pandemic uh, to serve and to work and to help uh, constituents. And obviously, we're not able to attend events but I've looked at ways to be able to connect with constituents and to hear from them, to respond uh, on their behalf. And I've been seeing a lot of successes. It's a lot of work. And I want to say thank you to my uh, staff that work both here in Ottawa and also in Pitt Meadows and Maple Ridge. Canadians have made a lot of sacrifices for health and safety to control COVID. I know many who have had COVID, uh, including my extended family and an uncle who passed. Uh, last year from it. We all have stories during this time. It has been difficult. It's also been a time when uh, people in my community have come together to help each other, whether it's staff and volunteers and friends in need food bank who have gone the extra mile, putting in the hours to make sure that no one goes hungry, and to organizations, many organizations, including uh, Seniors Network, which is actually a number of organizations that meet uh, to look for ways to support thousands of seniors in Pitt Meadows and Maple Ridge. Or 12-year-old Quinn Callender from Maple Ridge, who innovated and began making ear guards with his uh, 3D printer at home for healthcare workers and was an inspiration for all of us. And of course, all the frontline healthcare workers, their efforts uh, day in and day, day out uh, for a, nearly a year now is very much appreciated and valued. And I want to say thank you to the teachers uh, in the schools that are continuing to instruct classes. I was in, in uh, the classroom actually myself uh, prior to getting elected. So it's just kudos to them and thank you so much for what they're doing. Who could have imagined, as I said, uh, that our world, our nation, community would be turned upside down as it is. Closure of tens of thousands, probably maybe hundreds of thousands of businesses across our country from coast to coast to coast. The decimation of our hospitality and tourism sectors. I'll be presenting a petition later this week on behalf of travel agents who have uh, you know, tens of thousands that have really been impacted. Uh, on the way flying here to Ottawa, I sat with a, a flight attendant and told me of that there were thousands that were, had been given layoff notices uh, the, over the weekend. The, the wearing of masks, the closure of places of worship. And that's important, I know, too, for so many, uh, I know, of my constituents and across this, this country. It's the uh, inability to gather for weddings and for, for those who are passing, those that we care for. This is... It's not wrong to talk about this, and it's right to want to see an end to it. I know that we understand the health concerns, and people are doing their, their part, but we do want to see an end to it. And it's been frustrating and disturbing to watch the Johnny-come-lately approach of the Liberal government. And I get tired of hearing their talking points day in and day out. And what would that be? We've secured commitments for more vaccines per capita than any other country in the world. You ask a question about vaccine, we've secured more vaccine per capita than anywhere else in the world. Well, it's not how many you have secured or for the future, it's how many, are, how many people are being vaccinated today, this month. And we are behind. We need two million dosages to reach the goal of what the Liberals have said uh, by September uh, per week. Where we, this week alone, we have fallen 1.3 million, million vaccines short alone. Now, there's no doubt that eventually, eventually, we'll get the vaccines. And then the Liberals will call an election, or maybe sooner. But we didn't have to be in the situation that we're in. And the situation that we're in right now 
is because of liberal incompetence. Incompetence. While the liberals are betting all our chips on the Chinese vaccine last year with uh, Kensino, our allies were signing deals with AstraZeneca, Moderna, Pfizer, but Canada wouldn't sign deals until months later. And all Canadians are paying a price for this failure, Madam Speaker. Let me read a message from Rocky. I received this about an hour ago while I was just preparing some notes. And he says, good morning. He sent it in the morning. It's a three-hour difference. Good morning, Mark. Did I correctly hear that Canada didn't even get their orders for the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines till late? I would expect the manufacturer to fill orders based on, on orders in which they were purchased as they came in, or else they could expect severe backlash if they were shown to be given favorites on quantity. Did our country not know that? Or did they expect special treatment because we're in Canada? That's downright juvenile and ignorant if they did. Second, why were all our vaccine eggs in one basket at the onset? I have more faith in Pfizer, which didn't send us any last week or this week, than to get it done by Ken Sino. This is an unmitigated disaster, and so dis I'm so disappointed that while I've put our savings and house online for our business, the people we elected were unable to take off the political glasses long enough to see what was going on. This is infuriating. Then to blame it entirely on retooling. I was born at night, not last night. And that was from Rocky. Our collaboration working tightly with China, a country that is holding our two Michaels in hostage, that's banned many of our exports, that's persecuting Uyghurs, putting them in concentration camps, suppressing human rights in Hong Kong. What gives, Madam Speaker? Recent news that the Liberal appointed Canadian ambassador to China, Dominique Balton, he provided adv advice on the sales of Oxycontin for their sales to Canada, states. This is very sensitive, especially in British Columbia, where I come from. Thousands have died from overdose, ov overdoses, including there were 500 overdoses in the community of Maple Ridge, which I represent last year alone. The liberal COVID action has been pathetic. The health minister agreed to pay $237 million to Bayless Medical for 10,000 ventilators, even though the devices were not approved in any jurisdiction in the world. Bayless Medical, of course, is owned by Frank Bayless. And who is he? A liberal MP until last year, or until 2019 election. Why was there a fast track for Mr. Bayless's device, but no fast track for rapid testing that every Canadian needs right now? We're finally getting them, but it wasn't fast, and we've suffered from that. We're suffering the consequences today because of this. Why is this former Liberal MP with technology that has no track record uh, been approved? It hasn't been approved anywhere in the world getting a special deal, and on top of that, was able to pocket an extra $100 million that was sold, the vendor is selling for twice as much as the comp uh, competition. It's not right, Madam Speaker. It's not right. What's going on? What's going on? The Auditor General would like to know what's going on. He's been uh, an unprecedented time when unprecedented amount of money is being sold. What's happening? We like to know what's going on. The Auditor General would like to know, but the funds are being starved. He's not able to do the reports. Because what happens when you start to dig into the reports, into the finances? What do you start to see in the liberal, liberal expenditures? Now, I know this is old news, Madam Speaker, very old news. It's called the Wee Scandal. I know it's last year. You know, half a million dollars 
was given to for speaking fees for I'll conclude here. I have to take questions now. <laughs> the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Leader of the Government in the House. Yes, thank you, Madam Speaker. And it's a lot to take when you start giving out conservative spin of that nature in terms of what it is that we just listened to. Seriously, Madam Speaker, you know, we had a national vaccine committee with health experts that relied on research and so forth that actually did a fantastic job at protecting Canadians' interest. The reality is we will have 6 million plus doses by the end of March. Where was this conservative concern back in August and July when they had thousands of questions regarding vaccines and, and, and the other issues, rapid testings? Madam Speaker, hindsight is 2020, and the conservatives have dropped the ball when it comes to holding government accountable. But our focus has been the coronavirus and minimizing the damage, and that's exactly what we continue to do by working with Canadians. I'm wondering if my friend would like to provide his thoughts on what he thinks about the National Vaccine Council. Honourable Member for Pitt Meadows, Maple Ridge. I will say that uh, hindsight is one thing, but how about just some foresight, which was tremendously lacking, and just some sight. That's what we like to see, is some sight into more of the liberal expenditures. The parliamentary budget officer certainly would like to know what's going on with the many expenditures. The auditor general would like to know what's going on. We would like to go know what's going on. And it's been hidden uh, to the, uh, the public and to members of parliament. I was mentioning about We Charity. The, the par prime minister prorogued parliament so that we couldn't go in to see in committees to see what exactly is going on. There's a lot more going on that meets the eye. What about SNC-Lavalin, by the way? That's older news, except for they were just given a $150 million contract for COVID, COVID uh, expenditures, for equipment and all that. What's the details with this, this company that has been involved with, 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 that, with impropriety? 